All rise. We have Ulla there. Any date after March 4, 2013, the date set for the next general election, was always preferred by three of the four Kenyan suspects charged with crimes against humanity at the International Criminal Court at The Hague. March, mid-March or so of, of, of next year, we have no objection to a date being taken after March as suggested by prosecution. Only Francis Mudaura had wanted an earlier date, but his wishes could not be granted as the prosecution wanted to synchronize the cases and also needed more time for logistics. Although Kenyans now know both the election date and the date when the ICC trials against the Ocampo Four should begin, that barely sorts out any of the complications that may arise, especially if one of them either makes it to the runoff or is elected as president. Constitutional lawyers and experts familiar with the ICC process contend that the presidential candidacy of Deputy Prime Minister Uhuru Kenyatta and Eldred North MP William Bruto could result in constitutional crisis if either of them were to be president. For instance, if they won, would they cooperate with the ICC as they have consistently repeated in court? I don't expect that a sitting president will just submit himself to the ICC to be tried uh, for uh, charges uh, on uh, crimes against humanity, against uh, people or against uh, his own country in which he has been elected president. That would then mean that the president has violated not only the International Crimes Act but also the Constitution. If the elected president declines to cooperate with the ICC, then chances are that the the court on application by the prosecutor could issue a warrant of arrest. Sanctions and international condemnations are what would follow, according to these experts. What if the president-elect were to offer himself for trial? Muriuki contends that he would be open to impeachment by parliament, according to section 145 of the constitution, or face lawsuits not only from disgruntled losers, but any Kenyan conversant with section 258 of the constitution. With all these complications, one wonders whether all this could have been sorted out in the first place through our own local systems and whether there are any easy solutions at the moment, especially from the suspects themselves. Meanwhile, the ICC has sentenced former Congolese warlord Thomas Lubanga to 14 years imprisonment. Lubanga was found guilty of conscripting and enlisting child soldiers in the Ituri region of the Democratic Republic of Congo from 1st September 2002 to 13th August 2003. The court also ordered that the time from Lubanga's surrender to the ICC on 16th March 2006 until today should be deducted from his 14-year sentence. For News at 8, I'm Andrew Ochiang.